hopefully by now you've already watched two or possibly three videos. Um, the one about which if questions you should use in part one of your speaking exam and then the explanation of if sentences, um, second conditional as they call it when we're talking about things that are not real. And the there is more practice on page, I think it's 154. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's 154. Let me try it. 154. No. Okay. Must be the next page. I know it wasn't. Of course it wasn't. It was a little bit later than that. It was... Here we go. What's that then? Page 158. If we had a car, we would drive there. But we don't have a car, so we don't drive there. Or we won't drive there, we could even say. You could apply for the job if you had the qualifications, but you don't have the qualifications, so you can't apply for the job. Okay, and then there are two there in the past that we're not really that bothered about. Um, you could be really clever. Um, if you watch the video that I made about Glenn Miller in Bedford, um, then, which is the last video in the original playlist, then number three and number four that you can see up here, um, they are past unreal sentences, things that it's too late to change. Uh, if you are confident with that grammar, you could use that as one of your questions after your partner's presentation. If you had known that the holiday uh, was, would be a disaster, would, would you have still um, made the same booking, okay? If you had known that Bedford is so far from the sea, if you had known that the English weather is so miserable, would you have come here? That kind of thing. But as I said, that's not really necessary. If you want to show off, yeah, then by all means, try it. Let's get back to page 102. The reason I chose this unit is... Um, Checking and clarifying. Don't forget, it's a speaking and listening exam, but it's also a um, showing that you're understanding and commenting exam. That would just make a very long title for an exam. That's why it's just called speaking and listening. But you need to show that you're listening to your partner. So in part one, uh, and in the role play probably more than anything, you will need to check with the other person that you've understood something correctly, okay? Um, you can't work with a partner because, of course, I'm off sick, so you're probably doing this at home. Um, but we can see two different situations here of some fine dining. Looks a bit like Vienna. And it looks like a rip-off of Weatherspoons uh, or Toby Carvery. I don't know. Anyway, that's not important because you can't do that exercise together now. Sorry. Anyway, um, I hope this has gone out to you in an email to say that we don't have to compare pictures in our speaking exam. Many speaking exams do it. Um, ESB does it at entry level, but there are no pictures to compare. OK, so we're still going to look at the back of the book and we're going to look at these two pictures. Let me just focus on that. And here you can see uh, uh, the Borneo branch of Tesco. Um, no, it's not, but it is obviously it's a, it's a floating market. And you can also see uh, this picture of old people in Stockholm, Sweden. I am pretty sure. Um, and yeah, what they're doing in their free time. Um, you're also going to hear somebody else on page. Now, was that one, three, four? I should have written all this down, shouldn't I, really? <laughs> you can't plan when you're on your ah, on your sick bed. Here we go. Yeah. So you'll see um, this, which I don't know where that is, Thailand or somewhere like that. Uh, another market. And also another thing that older people do this time, not in Sweden, but pretty obviously in China. So um, you're going to hear two people comparing these. And what they want you to do is they want you to focus on the language that these people use um, when not just when they're comparing them, but also that they're checking that you understand, checking that the other person understands what you say and ways of asking the person to repeat. OK, you will not need all of these, but. It's really quite useful to um, to look at this, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
<clears throat> this is going to be quite difficult because, of course, they're describing pictures on different pages and I can't keep going backwards and forwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the recording and go to one of them. Um, anyway, here it comes, OK? Listen to them and I'm also going to put the script up. And here it comes. Audio 10.12. Okay, well, my photo is of a market. There's a man in the foreground cooking something. Sorry, did you say cooking? Yes. That's a difference then. My photo shows a market too, but I can't see anyone cooking anything. And I don't think I can see any men either. They all seem to be women. They're wearing headscarves or straw hats and brightly coloured dresses. Mine's a mixture of men and women. I don't think anyone is wearing a hat or a headscarf. Uh, what else? What are they selling? My photo shows some different fruit and vegetables. I can see a lot of bananas. Ah, mine are selling fruit and vegetables too. And lots of bananas. But I bet your sellers aren't on the water. I'm not quite sure what you mean by on the water. <laughs> I mean they're in boats. In boats? You look a bit confused. You know, it's a floating market. All the sellers are in boats on the river. Oh, I see. No, I think my sellers are definitely on land. So they're the same in that it's a market. They're selling fruit and vegetables and different in that I've got men and women selling, and you've got only women, and your sellers are in boats. Okay, let's go back now. I think I can close that. And we're going to look at the answers for these missing ones, um, and then I'm going to comment on each one and how useful they are and what I think is best for the exam. Okay, so, yeah... <clears throat> ways of checking the other person are you still with me do you see what i mean do you know what i mean okay actually sorry i'm going to put up the headlines first there we go um do you mean so are you saying am i right in thinking that so if i understand you correctly we're going to add one more or asking them to repeat i'm sorry i didn't quite catch that last bit i'm sorry what did you say about blah 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 now before we go to the answers for these ones, uh, I want you to think about the difference between um, I didn't catch that or I didn't get that. You'll hear both of them, okay? I didn't catch that is normally there's an acoustic problem. In other words, I didn't hear clearly what you said, and it means repeat the exact words. So I didn't catch what you said. I didn't hear what you said. Same thing, okay? I didn't get what you said can also mean I didn't understand what you've said. And so we can use that one if we want somebody to rephrase something, to say it in a different way, use different words. That's very useful um, when you're talking to the examiner. In fact, to be quite clear with this, this is probably, part three, it's probably the most useful when the examiner asks you a question. Okay, right, let me put up the answers to the missing answers now. Um, what on earth have I clicked on there? I have no idea where the answers why the answers aren't showing here. Um, anyway, it doesn't really matter. Let's have a look at those ones again. So check in with the other person. Are you still with me? No use for the exam, okay? Do you see what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Very, very good in the role play, okay? I think I should get my money back um, because you can't give me a replacement. Do you see what I mean? Okay. Um, so are you saying I should give you all your money back just because you want to cancel the children's party? OK, so if I understand you correctly, um, you will phone me when the bag turns up, that kind of thing. OK, that's why I'm saying you need some strategies to make it clear that you understand something and make it clear that you're agreeing in the role play. OK, right. So um, I'm just going to run you through uh, the extracts here. Here we go. Audio 10.13. One. Sorry, did you say cooking? Two. I'm not quite sure what you mean by on the water. Three. 
you look a bit confused. You know, it's a floating market. Okay, those were those phrases repeated again. As I said, you need to just be aware of it and think of ones that you think are suitable for yourself. There is some stuff about writing here. Um, I think this is actually quite useful for your presentations because you could say, today I'm going to talk about an old cafe in Porto called the Majestic. Okay, um, take a look at the differences between the two. Okay, what's missing in the first text? It's all about the one at the beginning. And you can see the second one's longer, isn't it? The smell of coffee, the bitter aroma of coffee. Yeah, what are they doing? They're using words to do with sound, taste, touch, and sight. Okay, uh, I'm going to put up the answers to that in, in uh, a few seconds because um, the, we're running out of time with this video. There's one more to come after this one. Um, so here we go. Here come the answers in five, four, three, two, one. And the second text is more detailed. It, the first one only describes what you can see. The second one describes other senses as well. If you're presenting about somewhere you've visited, a place you've traveled to, please include that. And if you're asking a question, maybe the second one uh, about your, your partner's presentation or the third one should be about how that person felt, okay? Again, I'm gonna put the answers to these ones in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and these are sound words. Clatter is when you drop something hard on a hard surface. Noisy was normal, isn't it? Murmur is when it's a very low sound. Aroma, yeah, means the smell of something. Uh, a feast is, a, you know, a big banquet. Uh, I think all the other ones, rich, yeah, you can have rich cake. Okay, um, yeah, uh, I think all the other ones, twinkling is what stars do. You, If you've uh, got kids at nursery, twinkle, twinkle, little star. Striking in this case means, you know, it, it kind of hits you in the face. It's, you know, in a good way, okay? Right, I really must wrap this one up here. Um, so that's the end of this one.